Hey everyone, welcome back to AWS On Air live at the London Summit. My name is Adrian Samiguel. I'm a partner enterprise architect whose voice is definitely still not back yet, but it will, at least producers say so. I'm joined by longtime compatriot and hat aficionado, AM. Say hello, AM. Hello, AM. You knew, you knew, you knew. You set me up for that. I How dare did. You? I'm a developer advocate here and one of your hosts uh, throughout the day. You will see me up on the stage occasionally. Be begrudgingly, yes. Yeah, but we've got some new friends to meet down here at the uh, other end of the table. We're going to be talking uh, some quantum computing, some machine learning, you know, just some light topics here, no. right? Not, not too complex or anything, huh? No, no? Okay, <laughs> let's start with introductions first, please. Hi, uh, I am Jagdish Kosopadi. I am one of the principal solutions architect from AWS. Great. Marco, tell Hi, us about yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm Marco Paini from Rigetti. Uh, Rigetti is a full stack quantum computing company, and uh, you can access our QPUs, our quantum computers, through Bracken. Okay, so we are specifically today talking about quantum computing within financial applications, uh, is my understanding. And there are certain challenges mm -hmm. when building financial applications that quantum computing can solve. Uh, can you walk us through what are those problems and, and why quantum computing? Yeah, so uh, specifically, uh, we did some work recently with Imperial College London and uh, Standard Charter, the bank. Uh, and what we've been looking at is uh, time series. Uh, so fundamentally, processes that have a time evolution, uh, they're normally difficult uh, because they have a stochastic element. A classical example is predicting the price of a stock, for example. Okay. Incredibly difficult. A little bit difficult to do that even today. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, at any time, I would yeah. say, yes. All right, so uh, what are we talking about today? You mentioned Bracket. Um, what, what is Rigetti doing with Bracket? But before we get there, oh, what, what, sorry. Is, what is Bracket? Well, yeah, great question, too. Mm. Yeah, I can start with that. So okay. uh, Amazon Bracket is our quantum computing service. So it, it was introduced about five years ago. It has been GA. So it, its main purpose is to provide access to quantum simulators and quantum hardware for, for everyone. And so we use uh, quantum simulators for experimentation, and then once you have built your quantum circuits and algorithms, you can run them on real quantum hardware, and one of the quantum providers we have is Rigetti, and so Bracket is used to run quantum circuits. Okay. Well, awesome. Maybe, Margo, you can just show us what uh, what, sure. what you all are working on. Maybe I, I understand you've got a demo for us, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's a, it's um, more than anything just a graphical representation of a time series okay. and the prediction that we make. And uh, as you would normally do with machine learning, there's a training phase, okay. and then there is a test phase where you actually verify that the prediction is accurate or inaccurate. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so uh, this is a specific problem that we worked on, again, with, uh, with uh, Standard Charter, with Imperial College. And we use Bracket, uh, in this case, to simulate quantum circuits. So we're not running on, on hardware or QPUs right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so the problem specifically is a limit order book problem. Uh, I'll give some definition to explain. I'll, I'll kick it off, and maybe I'll explain a little bit what this thing oh, is. Yeah, here we go. Oops. Okay. So, um, the gr sorry, the gray line. The gray line is basically a time series. In this case, it represents uh, the variation of price, okay, yeah, of the mid price, uh, which is fundamentally the midpoint in the so-called limit order book, which is a record of all transactions uh, that do not match. So when you want to buy or sell a stock, mm -hmm. uh, you can do it at the market price, or you can set a limit order. Uh, which is if you want to sell a little bit higher than the market price, if you want to buy a little bit lower, and at some point maybe it, it matches and it completes. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of these trans all of these records uh, fo form the limit order book, and the midpoint is the mid price. And here, and this is very informative in terms of the trend that a price of the stock will actually have. And so this is the training phase where we have a set of 1,000 records from a limit order book. Yeah. And basically, the training mechanism is just going through all of them and trying to find fundamentally the past and the trend represented in this plot. Yeah. Um, so by doing that, uh, so in this case, differently from the prediction, I had pre-downloaded uh, the, the results of the circuit sent to bracket to make it a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, and so what it did is it just gone through a thousand points. Yeah. And store the data as again learning data, training data, and now it should use this on a curve that it hasn't seen before to try to predict which way it's going to go. Yeah. This is this is phenomenal. It 
it is so difficult to stratify and quantify how hard it is to do some uh, simple operation like counting. Computers are great at counting, but we have to be hyper-specific on limits, what's acceptable, you know, define, define the floor, define the ceiling. And it's hard. It's, it sounds very simple, but it's one of the hardest things to do. And it looks like you may have helped us get a handle on that. So the, the, a quantum computer, I'll, I'll uh, start the, the prediction in the meantime, just because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go for Take a little. Time. Uh, so the, a quantum computer does very specific things. Uh, we shouldn't think of it as a generic replacement of a general replacement of a classical computer. Right. right? Handles, mm -hmm. and so, handles different algor algorithms than a classical mm -hmm. computer would. That's right. And it's potentially good at doing, again, very specific operations. Now, this is, uh, you see the little, there's a little inset on the bottom on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, so now this is actually connected to bracket. It sent a job, a hundred quantum circuits to simulate it's got the result back uh, for the f for the batch with this 100 circuits from bracket. Now it moves on to the next job, yeah. And basically, what it's doing here it is anticipating which way the curve is gonna go, yeah. And it's green points means it got it right. Red points means made a mistake. Um, and uh, we measure that with some standard score, accuracy score in machine learning, which is the F1 score, mm -hmm. yeah, and it uh, more or less it goes at around 73-74%. Uh, and so the way, and maybe this is the difficult connection to make, mm -hmm. the reason we've got, we use a quantum computer here or a quantum circuit, <coughs> simulated in this case, is because we, so we're using basically these objects that were developed and enhanced by Imperial College, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's a classical pipeline. But before we use this classical machine learning pipeline, yeah. we send the data to the quantum computer, or a simulator in this case, and the quantum computer transforms it. Okay. Uh, and instead of sending to the classical pipeline the original data, we send this transformed data. And a bit miraculously, and it might sound a bit, might sound a bit obscure, uh, the prediction becomes a lot better. Yeah? Yeah. So if we were to send, in fact, the original data same pi to the same pipeline, the score would be, the, the F1 score would be less than 50%. Oh, wow. Awesome. That's uh, significant so, improvement. So there, are, so there are actually, it is obscure, but there are actually reasons even classically why some of these transformations lead to better scores. Yeah, feature maps and kernel methods are classical too, yeah, and exist in classical machine learning too. I think you hit on something very interesting. Chat, we want to hear from you. What, if any, is your org's primary interest in quantum computing? Because as Mark was saying, this is, super useful in this industry, but we'd also like to hear from you on what you're doing. And if we have any questions for the group, by all means, drop them in chat, we'll get to them. I had one, uh, Marco, no. can I ask? Not you. Oh, oh. well, I'll write it in chat and then you'll have to uh, ask it out loud. Uh, Marco, um, you know, can I ask, Rigetti, when you're, when you're analyzing these problems in financial you know, applications, how do you decide between which ones uh, are, are better suited towards quantum? Yeah. Oh, great question. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, uh, quantum computing is difficult, not only because I think building the hardware is difficult. Yeah. yeah, right. But even at, I think, an algorithmic level, there's still a lot that we need to understand. Yes. Yeah? So if I look at machine learning specifically, there are certain features that we like in problems that make them good for potential quantum computer. Mm. An example is, and I think it is an important uh, feature that the problem needs to have, is that the data set should be relatively small. So it's never going to be any good to, say, do large language models. Uh, where you've got like huge data sets, it's not necessarily good for uh, proce to process images. Mm -hmm. So it, the, this case, when uh, I think when the, we only process a thousand records of the limit order book, it, the ability that it's got in generalizing and getting a signal out of a small training data set, that I think is a defining feature for what we understand now, because again, there are still various things that aren't 100% clear. For what we understand now, that is a re really a key feature that we look for in a machine learning problem. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Did it, you have a question, Adrian? I do, I have lots of questions, um, most of which are ex existential in nature, but I can't ask those here. <laughs> so the, the important thing for folks to remember, and even myself as a technologist, is this way of thinking and computing is still relatively new. Is that a fair statement? Oh, yes, yes. So when we talk about the of, of this being relatively new and maybe a bit 
difficult for folks to get started. We'd love to hear from you in your own words how you approached getting this going, for one, and then two, if possible, uh, to touch on what your favorite part of the journey has been thus far, because when I speak with customers and partners, there's always that little bit of edge of uncertainty, the, the not wanting to be the first ones to go do it. Really curious to see how that impacted you and your org. So there is, for sure, a great deal of uncertainty mm -hmm. on, on timelines, uh, especially, and this makes it exciting. I think the, the main thing that makes it exciting, really, is that there is constant progress and new findings and new understanding. So it isn't relatively new, it's very new. Yep. And there's still a lot that we don't really understand and appreciate. So we're really, really distant from the maturity of classical computing. And I don't think that's a bad thing because we don't know what we don't know. And as we know for sure, certain, sometimes the discovery process leads to happy accidents that end up being revolutionary, something entirely different. So I, I think that, you know, at least for me, you're approaching this in a fantastic way. And even just being up here and talking to us about the journey is really impactful for folks that are either ambivalent or in some instances incredulous that this could potentially help them. This, yeah. will, this is why the stories are so important. Let me let me ask you, maybe specifically with Imperial College, maybe not, you know, just, just generically, Marco and, and Yudish, um, you know, you're running these experiments, right? Uh, and, and Bracket allows you to do that with the simulations and mm -hmm. things like that. How do you how do you decide when to run an experiment mm -hmm. and what does that process look like rolling it out with the company that wants to run this experiment to see if quantum computing can help them with their problems? Yeah, so I think what we try to do, and it is the case for this work, but is I think the case also for other work that we've done is the reason we had Imperial College and Standard Charter, and then a collaborator like AWS and Bracket, is because we, again, there is still so much that we need to understand that we want to form a group that has all the elements, uh, starting from like the more foundational, so it's Imperial College, uh, because again, there is a lot still in the foundations that needs to be understood. We also want to go all the way to real end users, so a bank that provides a real use case. So we need to start growing the ecosystem beyond just the technical capability, right? And so we continue to try to maintain the engagement with end users to understand real problems, not you know contrived sort of yeah. instances of things that don't really have any value. Uh, and we play the role of trying to be in between. So we actually have physical hardware. So if we want to test then how uh, an application performs in hardware, we can do that. We understand how to optimize our hardware. Yeah. And we have an appreciation for the applications uh, and at the same time, a little bit for the foundation. So we play, we are just there in that, uh, in that middle ground. Um, so I think it's important to still maintain all, end, all ends of the spectrum uh, from end users to truly like the ones that understand theory. Excellent. All right, so uh, I want to remind everybody that we do have a poll live in chat right now. Uh, we want to hear about what you are doing with quantum computing. Uh, so check that poll out. Um, we're, we're getting real close to wrapping up here. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that uh, that you all want to leave the audience with, right? Any any words of advice as you are, are kind of blazing some trails here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, I, uh, for industry, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'd be really happy, and I think, uh, you know, continuing the engagement and industry participating in what's uh, really, I think, exciting endeavor, um, you know, that, that would be my desire and my hope that it continues and it continues to develop. Yeah. Love it. Get involved. That's, get get that's involved like and me. get your specialists involved as well. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a nugget I'd love to leave behind too. Yes. Thank you both for joining us. Thank uh, you very much. We got to run, unfortunately, but. We'll be back with more, so stick around.